Hello students, welcome again. My name is Boniface, a biology teacher. I'm happy to be with you so that we can share some important concepts in plant reproduction. As you remember, last time I presented to you the structure of the flower and the gametogenesis. Today, I'm going to present to you fertilization in flowering plants. It means once the gametes has formed, the next step is fertilization so that other important uh, structures in the plants can be formed such as seed and the fruits. But before we go into this concept, let us go back to another important aspect of fertilization known as pollination. Because the pollen grains must be transferred from the anther to the stigma. It means this refer to transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. So that fertilization can take place. To remind you, what are agents of pollination? There are several agents of pollination, but of most importance, you have, we have insects. Insects such as bees, wasps, and the butterfly are very important in a uh, process of pollination. These they do carry pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. And the flower pollinated by insects are known as insect pollinated flower. Are known as insects pollinated flower. This flower has very important characteristics that attracts insect to them. For instance, they have bright color. The petals are brightly colored, but also they are scented. It means they do produce sweet smell. that attract the insect, but also they do produce sticky pollen grain that can stick on the board of the insect. But also this flower produce nectaries which contain food substances. But these are just a few. You can add other important features that the insect pollinated flower constitute. But also, there are wind. Wind is another agent of pollination. They do carry pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. That when the wind blows, that cause can take the pollen grains to the stigma. The flower pollinated by the wind is referred to wind pollinated flower.
This flower has characteristics different from insect pollinated flower. For instance, they are not scented. They don't produce sweet smell. But also, they don't produce nectaries. Which is produced by insect pollinated flowers. But also, the petals. are not brightly colored. You see petals do not have bright color that can attract insect. But also they do produce a very light pollen grains. which can be carried easily by the blowing wind. These are just a few. I'm sure you remember more than these features. You can add them. If that's the case, pollination has another aspect, that types of pollination. But when this occur, has two types. The first one is a self-pollination. Self-pollination. Consider this sketch of the flower with these anthers. This being the stigma, these anthers. If in case, when the pollen grains move from here to the stigma, this is self-pollination. It means the pollen grains are carried from the stigma the anthers to the stigma of the same flower, of the same flower, that is self-pollination. But also, it can happen that the pollen grains can be carried from the anther of flower A to the stigma of the another flower, but on the same plant, that is also self-pollination. Another type is a cross pollination. Here, the pollen grains are carried by either wind or insect from the anther to the stigma of another flower of different plant of the same species. It means you have this tree. And this is the flower, it's being the the anthers. These are the anthers. If this is a flower of plant A. And this is another flower This is plant B If the pollen grains are carried from this anther to this stigma of different plant of the same species, or 
know from this answer taken by any means to this stigma by either wind or insect of two different plants of the same speech, this is cross pollination. This refers to cross pollination. Dear students, this was just to remind you that before going to fertilization, we have also to consider some important aspect that carries pollens from the answer to the stigma. Now, you think, where can you meet this concept in examination? This concept can be asked in biology paper 1, even biology paper 3, the practical paper. You can be asked this question. For instance, you can be asked to differentiate between cross pollination and self pollination. This is one of the examples of the question that can be asked. But also, you can be asked to describe the structure of insect pollinated flower. But also, you can be asked to differentiate also between insect pollinated flower and wind pollinated flower. These are just a few examples, are just a few questions that can be asked. To answer this question, you just go back to the knowledge of pollination, as I have reminded you right here. Now, let us go to our area of concentration, which is fertilization in flowering plants. Dear students, after having reminded some important aspects in pollination, let us go now to our point. But my presentation is going to be guided with some questions that will take us to various aspects of fertilization in flowering plants. And at the end of this question, we have touched all of the important aspects in fertilization. The first question reads, the process of double fertilization involves several events. Describe events which lead to double fertilization. What you need to know here is that double fertilization is a unique aspect in flowering plants only. There are different groups of plants. We have lower plants, moss and liverworts. We have fenny plants. We have higher plants, the gymnosperms, and the flowering plants, which we are discussing here. It is only these that undergo double fertilization. To respond to this question, what you need to go through is the events that can lead to double fertilization. For instance, the first aspect here that will enable you responding to this question is the arrival of pollen on the stigma. Here, 
Here, the pollen grains must arrive on the stigma either by wind or by insect, that is pollination. When it has arrived at the stigma, the second aspect to be considered in response to this question is that the pollen grain absorbs water and the nutrients. This aspect is very important because water enables the pollen grain to swell. But these nutrients enable the pollen grain to grow. Therefore, after this aspect has taken place, the pollen grain swells and grows. This growth leads to what? It leads to formation of pollen tube. Formation of pollen tube being the third event. Where is the pollen tube come from? The pollen tube is formed from tube nucleus. These tube nucleus divide and give rise to pollen tube. And then this the tip of the pollen tube produce the enzymes that digest the path through the style for the pollen tube to grow. The same tip of the pollen tube secretes auxin hormone, which initiates elongation of the pollen tube toward the embryo sac micropyle. The next event, which forms the fourth event, is that the pollen tube arrives, the micropyre. it arrives the micropyle, the tip of the pollen tube bursts open. And release the two male gametes into the embryo sac. After the male gametes has released into embryo sac, the next event is fertilization. This is where the concept of double fertilization comes. The fertilization here involves fusion of male gametes and the female gamete. In flowering plants, there are two types of fertilization.
The first fertilization involves fusion between the first male gamut and the egg cell. This process leads into formation of diploid. Zygote. But the second fertilization involves the fusion between second male gamete and the diploid polar nuclei. These polar nuclei are found at the center of the embryo sac. This second fertilization lead into formation of primary endosperm nucleus. The phenomena in which two sets of fertilization occur in the same embryo sac refer to double fertilization. By so doing, you will have responded correctly to this question, which require to describe different events leading to double fertilization. Let us now see the next question. And this reads as follows. How does the pollen grain from the stigma reach the ovule? If you see this question, is not very far from the question number one. Only that it has been asked in a different way. The question asks, how does the pollen grain from the stigma reach the ovule? This is the stigma. The stigma. Here is a pollen grain. Here there is ovules. This is the ovary, and this is the style, the receptacle. How does the pollen grain moves all the way to ovules? It means to respond to this question, you have to consider some aspects that it takes the pollen grain to stigma. As I've said, the pollen grain has arrived the stigma. What then occurs? First, you have absorption. Of water and nutrients from the stigma. This enable the pollen grain to swell and grow. This aspect lead to another aspect, the formation of pollen tube. This formation of the pollen tube is a result of growth of the pollen grain. 
Another aspect is that they arrive of pollen tube at the embryo sac. It has arrived at the embryo sac. Another aspect you have to consider here is that when the pollen tube has arrived the embryo sac, what happened? The pollen tube tip burst open and release the male gametes into the embryo sac. Release of male gametes into the embryo sac. And the last tea, after this has released, when they have released the embryo sac, you will have to explain what happened. This will mark the end of our description. Because the embryo sac are within the ovules. By so doing, you will have responded to this question correctly. You will have to tell this, 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 and uh, this. What happened at each aspect. And that will be the answer for question number two. Let us go to question number three and see how it can be responded. Question number three says briefly describe the changes which take place in the ovules of the flower after fertilization. Dear students, this question requires a description on changes occurring in the ovule after fertilization. After fertilization, there are two structures formed in the ovule. The first one is the zygote. The second one is the endosperm. The primary endo nucleus. But there are other cells present in the embryo sac at the time fertilization was taking place. There is antipodo cells. But also there are synergies. Therefore, this question requires what will be the changes occurring in these structures after fertilization. Starting with the zygote. After fertilization, the zygote undergo rapid mitotic division, producing large mass of cells. These cells undergo cell differentiation, producing plumely and radical. This form what we call the embryo. To produce the plumely and the radical require, as I've said, cell differentiation. Therefore, what is needed here, you will have to describe developmental changes leading to formation of the embryo from the zygote. But also, there is primary endosperm.
the primary endosperm, dear students, the cells uh, forming the primary endosperm will undergo another mitotic division producing large mass of cells. These cells will absorb water and swells. But also they will absorb nutrients from the parent body. The result of this process is the transformation of the primary endosperm to endosperm. It means at the end of this process, the endosperm will be pro produced from the primary endosperm. My dear students, to answer this part of the question, it means you will have to describe the developmental changes that will transform the primary endosperm nucleus to endosperm. Another thing is the synergy. These are cells present in the embryo sac, just near the micropi. Something to ask, what is the importance of the synergids? Dear students, synergids produce a chemical substances that helps in attracting the pollen tube toward the embryo sac. It means after the pollen tube has arrived into the embryo sac and it has released the male gametes into the embryo sac, the male gametes fertilize the egg cell forming the diploid zygote. Another male gamete fertilizes the polar nuclei forming the primary endosperm nucleus. What then? After this fertilization has taken place, where does the synergid cells go? If at all they produce chemical substances which helps to attract the pollen tube toward the embryo sac. The synergid, when they have done its work, they degenerate. My dear students, it means the knowledge you have acquired here is that the synergids, they are not there for nothing. They help uh, to attract the pollen tube toward the uh, embryo sac by the chemical produced by the filiform apparatus which the synergid contain. After that, they degenerate. Dear students, another thing that you must change after fertilization is the antipodo. The antipodo cells, these are nutritive cells. They nourish the primary endosperm nucleus during its development to endosperm.
after the endosperm has developed, the antipodal disintegrates. They disintegrate after the endosperm has been developed from the, pri from the primary endosperm nucleus. Next question is question number four. Describe the importance of double fertilization in flowering plants. Dear students, you have heard this question which require a description on the importance of double fertilization. As we understand, double fertilization is a unique characteristic in flowering plants. And in a previous presentation, I said double fertilization is the set of fertilizations occurring in the same embryo sac, leading to formation of diploid zygote and primary endosperm nucleus. Therefore, to respond to this question, you have to consider the following developmental changes. One, zygote. One of the importance of double fertilization is that the diploid zygote is transformed into embryo. It means the cells forming the zygote undergo a rapid mitotic division producing large mass of cells. The cell produced as a result of mitotic division undergo cell differentiation producing two structures, the plumely and the radical. These two form what is known as the embryo. Therefore, one of the importance of double fertilization is the formation of the embryo, in which the zygote undergo a series of developmental changes. The second importance of double fertilization is that the primary endosperm develops into endosperm. To form the endosperm, there are series of developments. It means the cells forming the endosperm also undergo some sort of changes in which they absorb water. from the parent plant body. This water enables the cell to swell. But also the cell absorbs food nutrients and mineral nutrients from the parent plant body. In that cause of this process, the, the primary endosperm form the endosperm. But the question here is, what is the importance of the endosperm? The endosperm is a main uh, food storage part of the seed. Therefore, one of the importance of uh, double fertilization is the formation of endosperm.
which form the main food storage part of the seed. But another importance of double fertilization is referred to ovary walls. The ovary walls are transformed into fruit. This fruit includes the seed. My dear students, it means to respond to this question, you will have to consider all of these aspects. The formation of the embryo from the zygote. The formation of endosperm from the primary endosperm nuclear. And the formation of the fruit from the ovary wall. By so doing, you will have responded to this question correctly. Dear students, up to this point, we have managed to answer different questions from this concept of double fertilization. But what you need to know is that the same concept of double fertilization can produce the different questions. What you need is the knowledge that can enable you to respond to various questions. For instance, the question can be asked, explain the importance of each of the following structures of flowering plants in fertilization. It means these structures are involved in fertilization. What is their importance? To respond to this question, you have to explain the importance of stigma. Dear students, a stigma is a part of the female reproductive part. It is this part which receives the pollen gland from the answer. How does it perform its work? It means that the stigma it is sticky. This stickness allows the pollen grain to tack on it when it is brought by wind or insect during the process of pollination. Dear students, to answer this part you will have to explain the importance of what? Of the stigma. But also, there is style. A style is a structure that connects stigma to ovary. If it connects stigma to ovary, what is its importance? The style has a space in between. This space allows the transportation of male gametes in the pollen tube. The male gametes are within the pollen tube. Once the pollen grain lands on the stigma, it absorbs nutrients that stimulates its development into the pollen tube. The generative nucleus present in the pollen tubes undergo mitotic division, giving rise to male gametes. And these are the ones that are carried 
in the pollen tube through the style to the embryo sac where fertilization will take place. Last is the ovule. The ovule are structures in the female reproductive system. The ovule contain the megaspore mother cell. These give rise to female reproductive cell upon the process of meiosis. It is these megaspore mother cells undergo meiotic division to give rise to megaspores and the megaspores undergo a series of development involving mitosis giving rise to female gamet together with other cells such as antipodo, synergids and the polar nuclei. But also the ovule form the site where fertilization occur from the site where fertilization take place. You understand that the embryo sac is within the ovule. And it is where fertilization occur. Therefore, to respond to this part, you will have to explain the role of the ovule in the sense that it contains the megaspore mother cell that give rise to female gamete upon the process of meiosis. And also, it forms the site where fertilization occurs. By so doing, this question will be responded. Dear students, up to this point, I have managed to pass through various concepts of which I introduced to you in the beginning of my presentation. I'm sure you have acquired necessary knowledge that can enable you answering different questions that can be asked from this area, in particular uh, reproduction in flowering plants, particularly the concept of double fertilization. Thank you for being with me from the start of this presentation up to the end of this presentation. Till next time I say goodbye.